and welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Kenneth Gruenfelder, and it's great to have you guys here on this Monday. We got a lot to talk about on today's show, as we normally do, uh, but before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys uh, to become part of the show. Um, make sure to go to streamelements.com slash slash tip for donations and tips. And that basically, uh, like I said, it b- makes you a part of the show. Um, it gets your comment highlighted in the live broadcast. I talk about it. I address it. Um, and, yeah, it makes you part of the show. And, um, you know, again, it's a great way to get involved with it. And, uh, you know, it, help make, it helps make the show better, more lively, more interactive between myself and you guys, uh, the viewers. So um, make sure to do that. And, uh, yeah, so with that, let's get right into – Uh, what we're going to talk about today. So to start off the show, um, we are going to recap yesterday's game between the Bengals and the 49ers. Sorry, throat was uh, acting up there. Um, uh, Yeah, we're going to recap the Bengals and the 49ers game. Um, Now the Niners have lost three in a row. So we'll get into that in a second. We'll uh, recap uh, all the early window games from week eight. And then in the third part of the show, we will recap uh, the rest of the late window games. And then to conclude the show, we will go over, uh, we will preview tonight's game between the Raiders and the Lions. So with that, let's get right into the first part of the show, which is talking about uh, this game yesterday between the Bengals and the 49ers. And um, yeah, going into this game, the Niners have lost, you know, their last two games. The Bengals coming off of a bye. And this is a game that the Niners had to win to get themselves back on track. And the Bengals dominated this game. They, they really did. Um, they forced Brock Purdy to turn the ball over. Again, he threw some interceptions. He fumbled uh, towards the end of the game as well. And Joe Burrow looked really good. The offense for the Bengals looked really good. And the, th- the other thing, too, is, and I talked about it when I previewed this game, on Friday, the Bengals were one of the worst uh, teams running the football in the NFL. I think they were dead last in the NFL in rushing, rushing yards per game. And they were able to run the football effectively. Joe Mixon had a good game, 16 carries for 87 yards and a touchdown. But also, here's the thing, too. So with Joe Burrow, 283 passing yards, 28 to 32, it was nearly perfect. Three touchdowns to no picks. He was sacked a few times in this game. But Joe Burrow was their second leading rusher. He had six carries for 43 yards. And that's big in the sense that his calf is healthy or it's getting there. Um, I, I think that's huge because that just goes to show you that the Bengals, if he's right, the Bengals are going to be dangerous moving forward. And that's why I liked them to still win the division, even though, yeah, they're still technical. Well, now they're tied for second place with, the Browns and the Steelers. Everybody's still a game and a half back of the Ravens. Nobody gained ground from the Ravens. They beat the Cardinals yesterday. And I'll talk about that game in the third part of the show because there's something I need to talk about regarding the uh, the spread pool. And by the way, did very good in the spreads this week. Did very good with predictions this week. We went against the grain in a lot of in a lot of the games, but we were able to uh, we were able to rebound after a rough couple of weeks. So at least I could show you guys that I could make good predictions <laughs> for once. But yeah, so going back to this game though, uh, looking at the stats for the receivers, uh, Jamar Chase was targeted twelve times. He had ten receptions for hundred yards and a touchdown. So he had a big game, and he's been starting to get it going. T. Higgins five receptions for sixty nine yards. Tyler Boyd, three receptions for 40 yards and a touchdown. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the the Bengals looked really good in this game. And then as for the Niners, Brock Purdy, 365 yards passing, one touchdown, two picks, also had the fumble at the end of the game. He actually ended up being their leading rusher. Uh, He had 57 yards rushing. McCaffrey had 54 and a touchdown, so he extended his touchdown streak. Also had a receiving touchdown in this game. George Kittle had nine receptions for 149 yards. Brandon Ayuk had 5 for 109, McCaffrey 6 for 64, and the receiving touchdown, obviously. But, yeah, I I mean, the Bengals dominated this game from start to finish. And, yeah, I mean, as for the Niners, like, 
it's not looking good right now. It, it really, it's very concerning right now. Um, on the first, so we'll go through like the possessions quarter by quarter. So in the first quarter, um, the Niners started off with the ball. They punted. Bengals went right down the field on their first drive. Ten plays, eighty-five yards, uh, four and a, over four and a half minutes. And uh, yeah, that was the touchdown to Boyd to start off the game. Then the Niners actually did answer. Eight plays, seventy-five yards. Uh, they answered with a Christian McCaffrey touchdown. So you were like, okay, I mean, this game is going to be back and forth. And then the Bengals again, six plays, 58 yards, uh, three minutes and 19 seconds. They scored another touchdown, and that was to um, uh, to Osivas, or however you pronounce it. Eosivas, I, th I think that's how you pronounce it. Eosivas? I, I, again, I, I really apologize for the pronunci pronunciation of some of these guys. But, um, yeah, so he got, I think that was his second NFL touchdown because uh, he had one um, in one of the games in the previous week. But, yeah, so Bengals' first two drives of the, uh, for them in this game, they, they had touchdowns. And then the Niners, they punted on their next possession. And then the Bengals then went down the field, 11 plays, 48 yards, almost six and a half minutes. But McPherson missed the field goal. Then the Niners answered with the field goal, so it was 14-10. Bengals ended up fumbling towards the end of the first half, uh, but the Niners didn't capitalize on that. Bengals opened up the second half with a field goal. Then both teams punted. Then Brock Purdy threw a pick. Bengals punted on the next possession. And then Brock Purdy, the very next time he, the very next play on the Niners' next drive, throws a pick. Bengals answer with a touchdown. That was to Jamar Chase. And then uh, the Niners did answer with a touchdown of their own. Uh, Brock Purdy connected with Christian McCaffrey. So it was a one-score game. Then the Bengals uh, touchdown. That was to uh, – that was Joe Mixon's touchdown, so that put them up by two scores. Then the Niners fumbled. Uh, McCaffrey, uh, Purdy fumbled. And then, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. That was pretty much it. But the Bengals looked like – a Super Bowl contender in that game. And I l listen, with Joe Burrow running the football, uh, you know, I, I think he that, that calf is, is getting healthy. And if that's the case, I mean, they are going to be a very dangerous team moving forward. And especially now because Jamar Chase has started to get it going as well. Bengals are dangerous. Bengals are dangerous. Uh, their defense is good. You know, they, they ran the football well. In this game, and the receivers now you got everybody back because I know Higgins missed uh, you know some games with injury as well. And listen, I, I said also the key to this game is the offensive line being able to hold up against the Niners front. Now Burrow got sacked a few times, but you know he found his receivers when he had to. Niners back end is not good. Their their secondary really is not that good. That is that that is the Achilles heel of their defense, and really and. Yeah, it's it's not good. Now they've lost three in a row. They're still missing Trent Williams, no Debo Samuel, and Brock, and the the biggest concern really is the fact that Brock Purdy is turning the ball over now. I mean, two more interceptions, a fumble. That's not good. That's not good. And you know, at one point the Niners were looked at as Super Bowl favorites, the Super Bowl favorites, the favorites in the NFC. And you know, each week now that goes by. I mean that's that's it's changed. It really has because they they don't look good right now. And I mean, listen, Brock Purdy threw for 365 and you know, there was a couple of big plays, a couple of good throws that he made, but he's turning the ball over now. And now they're 5 and 3 and believe it or not, they actually are a wild card team now. The Seahawks have now surpassed them with their win over the Browns. They're in first place in the NFC West, which is crazy now to think about. Now, I don't think that's going to last. I think the Niners are going to get right. Because, again, like, teams are going to go through this. And right now, they're, you know, they're in a little bit of a funk. But I think they're going to get out of it. And I think they will ultimately win the, win the division. Now, in terms of them being the top seed in the NFC... I, I think you got to look at the Eagles right now as, you know, being the favorites to get home field 
uh, throughout the playoffs once again. Um, because uh, the Niners are getting set back. And the Niners are going to go on the road and play Philly later in the year. And, yeah, the way the last couple of weeks have gone, I mean, you can't, you got to like the Eagles in that game. You do. It's going to be at home. But we got we got some time before then. But right now, the Niners, I mean, they got to get right. And their defense, Brock Purdy turning the ball over and their defense not playing well these last few weeks. Yeah, it's it's a problem. It's a problem. It's not, it really isn't just Brock Purdy. It's the defense, too. I don't know what's going on with the defense. But they got some things they got to figure out. But for the Bengals, they're trending up. That's a team that is trending up right now. And they are going to be uh, trending up in the power rankings when those come out this week. So, but you got to like what you're seeing from them. I mean, also being able to run the football against the Niners, which is not easy. And when you're not a good rushing team, and they were able to do that. I think that in total they had like 134 yards. So, yeah, I mean, and now they got a big game coming up next Sunday night against the Bills. At home, that's going to be a great game. Looking forward to that. But, I I, I mean, right now I kind of uh, favor the Bengals a little bit in that game, leaning towards them because the Bills offensively don't look right. or in, in, Well, yeah, they don't look right. They're inconsistent right now on offense. But, yeah, that bye week really helped for the Bengals. It, it, it really did because that's the team that they're supposed to be. And they got off to a rough start. And, listen, I got – I kind of got called out in the comments section last week because I, I said that I liked them over the Ravens to win the division. But, yeah, I mean, they look really good. They look really good. So, right now you got two teams going in different directions at the moment when you're talking about this game. Um, but like I said, I, I think the Niners are eventually going to get right. It's just right now they're, they, they're, on a, they're, they're in a funk. That, that's, you know... Um, you know, they got to get guys back healthy, but again, like everybody talking about Brock Purdy being a system quarterback, you know, he's missing his left tackle. He's missing Debo Samuel. See what he's really made of. And he's, he's turned the ball over in recent weeks. And that's not good. That is not good. So, um, We'll see. I mean, the Niners go on a bye, so you're hoping you get Trent Williams back, you get Debo back, and then, you know, you're off and running again. But for the people that, you know, have been criticizing Brock Purdy, you know, they kind of have a case right now because he's not playing how he was playing at the beginning of the year. And the, and the Niners as a team. I mean, the defense is just, for the last two weeks, what's going on? So... You know, a, a rough, uh, rough few weeks for the Niners. Hopefully, the bye week, they can come out and they're back to how they were to start the year. Because I, I still look at them as a Super Bowl contender. I think I, I just think it's one of those rough stretches that they just got to deal with. But it, it's just, it's weird that Seattle is now in first place in that division. I think right now Seattle's the, the two seed in the in the NFC. Or the, let's see. Actually, yeah, they are because they have the tiebreaker over the Lions because they beat the Lions this year. Yeah. Let me just double check. Yeah, right now they got the two seed. Yep. That's uh, that's really weird. Um, but in, and, and not to discredit Seattle. Seattle's a, a good team. Um, but, I mean, I, I think the 49ers are still better than them. So... But we will uh, we'll see what happens. But I, like I said, I think the Niners are going to get right. So with that, we are going to take our first break of the show. And then when we come back, we are going to recap all of the early window games. So I'll talk about all of them. We'll get into Giants and Jets because that game was something. Um, so that's what we will do when we come back from our first break. So stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. <laughs> 